Hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Welcome to another exciting episode of Movie by Podcast. I am your host, Ruben, and with me, my brother in arms, the Russian. And today, we're going to talk about a very uh, unique movie. Which movie are we going to be talking about uh, today, Russian? So today, we're going to try to dip our toes to uh, glancing at the brilliance of Ex Machina. And... Uh, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, this is very uh, complicated movie to me. Uh, I will try to do my best to give uh, perspective what I saw in that movie. But uh, to, just just fair warning, I think I do not have the cap capacity and the mental intellect to understand all the intricate details which director and uh, scriptwriter Alex uh, Garland put into this movie. Uh, so if, if we miss something, we at least on my part, I apologize. If you guys have uh, a different view or something to add, please do not hesitate to put um, your thoughts and comments. And with that being said, um, let's dive in, Ruben. Let's, let's try let's to... Let's dive in. So um, again, a movie directed by Alex Garland. Uh, who actually this was his directorial debut. This was his first movie that he wrote and directed. Um, it was produced by A24. It's a very uh, small production company that actually has released a lot of great movies in the past few years. Right. You know, Ex Machina being one of them. Um, Her Hereditary, Midsummer, um, The Disaster Artist. Um, most of these films have gone on to win and be nominated for multiple awards. Um, Alex Garland, always, who don't know, which one? No, I'm saying like also every movie you mentioned, they have a, a slight following. I don't want to say like a cult following, yeah. but all of those movies made waves in a cinema industry, and all those exactly movies were low budget. Uh, for example, Ex Machina cost only sixteen million dollars to make, and to for the 2016 movie, that's that's peanuts. Like like sixteen people spend more money on on Super Bowl commercials. Um, so yeah. yeah, very impressive studio. And uh, Alex Garland. And then Alex Garland has come from he. You no, know, of course, this was his first movie he directed, but he wrote a lot of great screenplays and great stories that we saw in films. That includes um, Twenty Eight Days Later. The beach. Uh, he co-wrote uh, Dread. He wrote the beach. The beach uh, was novel, and he he yeah. I guess uh, the he was the adapted the screenplay. Right. Yeah, and he also did the sunshine, sunshine. which is sunshine. Uh, it's a, it's a it's a weird movie, and majority of the movies that he uh, wrote was directed by Danny Boyle, and mm -hmm. uh, I did like Ex Machina was his first project, and I did not see any trademarks of Danny Boyle which kind of impressive because Danny Boy is very like slick cut, like fast paced director, you know, he's transporting and all of that stylish uh, cuts. It, you don't have it neither in Ex Machina and you also don't have it in um, his follow up uh, movie, which is Annihilation. It's, it's very subtle. It's, it's a tone which kind of plays out as, as a very melancholic, there's nothing extraordinary going on. There's no like uh, big splashes on the screen. The music is very subtle up until the end, up until the third act. It's, it's, it's very uh, like a chess game. It's kind of like, yeah, you, you see these uh, very calm personalities to play, play out this game. And um, you kind of get drawn in or you, you, you don't, I think this is the movie with, test the patience of the audience as well uh if you give it a chance it will deliver on some level because nobody will walk away uh from this movie without some sort of opinion and some sort of feeling it will not uh let you uh be like on indifferent after the movie ends you're gonna have some kind of opinion and, and, and that's what the great movies do. They, they ask you a question and usually they don't give you an answer. Yeah. I mean, Alice Garland, I mean, uh, like you mentioned, Alliation, that's actually based on a series of books. 
that the studio was hoping to fulfill uh, as a trilogy, but Annihilation didn't do as well at the box office, so the sequels to that movie never came to fruition. Um, but That's let's sad. start. Let's start talking about uh, Ex Machina, you know, because this is the role that introduced us to Alicia Vikander. Uh, this right. is her breakout role. Uh, after this movie, she went on to star on like movies like Man from Uncle from Guy Ritchie, and then she did The Danish Girl with Eddie Redmayne, where she won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Amazing, amazing role she played in that in that that movie. Uh, but Ex Machina was the role that put her out there for the you know the audience in the United States because uh, before then she was she was just like uh, I think she's a what uh, she's like Swedish I think. I honestly, I, I'm, I don't I know she's like European, uh, but she did a lot of projects from her native land before she did Ex Machina. Right. And then obviously you have the great talents of Oscar Isaac in this movie who don't, who don't, he has done numerous movies, including the latest trilogy of Star Wars where he played Paul Dameron. Um, and then you have uh, Dom Dominic Gleason. Uh, Gleason. Dom he was Gleason, also in Star Wars. Is, he was also in Star Wars. He was in the Harry Potter movies. He's done a lot of projects, uh, secondary uh, supporting roles, and he is the son of the talented actor Brendan Gleeson, who played uh, Mad Eye Moody in the Harry Potter series, and he also was in uh, In Bruges with Colin Farrell. Uh, that's probably really? uh, that's his the Russians one. Of... Yeah, yeah, there. That's his father and son. Really? Yeah. Wow. But yes, In Bruges is yeah. one of my favorite movies. Uh, hopefully one yeah. day we're going to get so to talk about we will, that. Yeah, we'll definitely eventually talk about In Bruges. Uh, that's a great dark comedy. And we'll also talk about Hell or High Water. That's another right. and favorite gravity. movie of yours. You, you, you're naming yeah. everything I want to talk about. Uh, Gra gravity is coming. For, for the audience coming. that's waiting on gravity, it's coming. We just want to keep keep on holding you until we, we right. unleash that debate. It's going to be a big um, breakup. So, <laughs> but again, um, let's start with with Ex Machina. Like, this movie has so much detail to it. Like, the more times you see it, you start seeing different things. Right. So let's just start with the premises. All right. Uh, the premises to this movie is basically there's three main characters. There's Nathan, who is, um, let's just say, Elon Musk of his generation of his world. Uh, multi-billionaire owns the, his private Idaho and has the mansion, super security, the uh, fiber optics are running. You can go to the moon. Uh, very sophisticated, but the loner, an alcoholic, uh, self-made godlike man. Uh, I guess that's that, that'll be the best description of him. Uh, then you have Caleb. Is the guy who won this contest to come to this mansion and to test. Well, he doesn't know what he's doing, but he was invited to this mansion to do something cool. And something cool turns out he, he's going to be participating in a Turing test to test mm -hmm. this AI, which uh, Caleb um, going to you know see if he can if the AI will pass the Turing test or not, and Nathan going to observe it. And then we have Ava, played by Alicia Vikander, which is this artificial intelligence uh, put in a human-ish, female-ish yeah. body structure. Um, and this and is for those who don't from. know, um, the Turing test is a, a test that computer engineers uh, use where they put a human component uh, and have conversations with an AI component without meeting them face to face to determine if the AI can pass as human or not. Um, it's, it's named after uh, Alan Turing, uh, for those who wonder what the Turing test is. And it's something they do briefly describe in the movie. So it's also and also called the imitation game. Technically speaking, mm -hmm. there's three components. There is the subject A, which is the AI. There is a subject C, who is testing the AI. And then there's a subject B, who also feeds the information to C. And C needs to decide if A or B, which one is AI. Yeah. Hence... Hence the three main characters in this movie. Right, right, right. Yeah. So that's that's the situation here. And and mm -hmm. technically speaking, AI is Ava, 
uh, Caleb mm -hmm. is the is a tester, and then the B part of this equation is Nathan, who kind of absorbing their interaction and also obviously feeding. This is not like the linear equation, but he is feeding information to um, Caleb, so to kind of involve this test. This test is uh, consists of eight sessions, and uh, we follow this adventure from the beginning of Caleb's arrival to the well. First, he wins the the lottery, whatever you can call it, and then his journey uh, for seven, for eight sessions with Ava. So, so this is where we, this is where we start. Um, yep. So I I want to I want to I want to hear your your perspective what what does what do you take from this experience like how how did it influence so, Yeah. The the first time I saw this movie I found myself rooting for for Ava, right? You see this AI that's starting to show what you think are emotions. Right, and then you have the the human character who is play uh, Nathan, who starts falling for these emotions, right? And then you no, know, he Caleb. feels Caleb. bad for her. Caleb, is it Caleb? Caleb is the Caleb yeah, is the guy Dominic. Yeah, uh, Dom, no, yeah. Um, so Caleb played by Dominic Leeson. Um, but then it turns out it's something different. And then the second time I've seen this movie multiple times, and like every time I watch it there's a new detail that I come across with and it, it just changes how I view this movie. My real, my, my most recent perspective is that we've, we come across uh, AI uh, artificial intelligence that throughout the movie, you think the human component is testing the AI, but it turns out that the AI is testing the human. And we have all these men, uh, feelings and emotions that are being used to test the human to see how far this human being can go to help this artificial intelligence and then it's a sort of a, a, man, a manipulation we'll, we see a lot of the manipulation aspect throughout the three characters not just with Caleb interacting with Ava but we see it with Nathan and Caleb where Nathan constantly is taught and having conversations and manipulating what Caleb says to make him change his mind and how he sees certain, certain things uh, with Ava. Um, and one of the scenes that you can see that's when he's trying to sign a contract, right? He's reading and he's like, this sounds very complex. And he's like, no, it's not. I and need a lawyer. Like, I need a lawyer. And he's like, no, you don't. And he's like, oh, it seems it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem very standard. Right. He's like, okay, fine. You don't need a lawyer. I mean, you can, we can just hang out for this weekend, drink some yep. beers and just talk about how you're going to miss uh, the opportunity of your lifetime within a year and realize how much you missed. And boom, that's, that's the first manipulation. Like he's using, we, like Nathan knows what Caleb wants and he's using that information to his fa uh, favor. And and it's the same information that he relays eventually throughout the movie to Ava so she can use it to her favor to uh, get what she wants, which in the end is to escape from this underground resource with high tech security where she's trapped and she wants to get out. Um, so it's kind of like it's a big manipulation movie where all these three main characters are manipulating each other. And they're all playing each other, and at the very end, Ava's the big winner. Right, and the technically the world is the big loser, and mm -hmm. I I think you you touched a very interesting point of you know saying manipulation, um, and it's it, you see manipulation is always a big word to me, and and you can like I I applied the word to every single situation because every conversation you have like this conversation you know. It, Somebody from the outside can say, "Well, I'm manipulating you into think what what you know I say is the the truth, or you can manipulate me." So, I think it's a very uh, it's a harsh word to say, but I see your perspective. the 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 set rules here is that 
that Caleb is brought in to test Ava, right? That's his mind mindset. Nathan is there to to follow through if Ava can trick Nathan into believing that she's in danger and somehow provide her escape, which would not actually happen because for some reason in Nathan's mind, this version of Ava of this AI is not ready because throughout the movie, he's like, I'm testing her to make it better. We're going to erase everything um, memory wise. And we're going to, you know, upload the newest update and we're going to keep going because we, we, we see in a, in a, in a linear of the movie that th there's been multiple objects and, and this is not the creation of, you know, final product. And this is not the first product, but the trick here is starts with the first session when when uh, Caleb asks Ava how old is she and she says I am one and I he goes one. yeah I am one uh, one day one year what and she looks yeah. in the confusion she says I am one right in in her well I don't want to say mine because it's a it's a well, it's a computer program so in in that understanding i am one meaning i am that's it like there's no before and there's not going to be after mm -hmm. so right there the this the the script the situation it makes us to to start feeling for her right in nathan's mind she's not the one she's not the one it's not the only one it's going to be updated he's searching for the perfection even though he kind of lost the, the, the path of he's still a creator. He still thinks of, of himself as God, but he, he no longer following the procedures. He just gets drunk and lets these two play around. And uh, the Nathan, he's the naive kid who just wants to save something, somebody. And the way that he, he's being played or manipulated with your words, that's how the story unfolds and obviously every session it leads us to the to the switch where in the first scene we think that nathan is in control and he's willingly giving that control to ava and the way that happens it's a very clever simulation because in a session two for example uh, she asks him he says, well, draw something. And she says, what do you want me to draw? And he says, well, an object. She says, what kind of object? object? And he says, well, it's your decision. And then he, she kind of flushes and she says, why is it my decision? Why do I have to decide? Right? Because before she never had a, had a decision to make. She was uh, doing things according to the plan. But in, in this instance, this is her first test real test where she's that mouse in the maze and she has to uh, use every set skill she has according to Nathan which we find out later on in order to win this situation right so she flips it around and the only thing she figures out to do is to ask him hey do you want to be my friend and then it throws Nathan's approach completely it's like to be a friend to any of us, it means some kind of emotional attachment, right? Yeah. Nobody, I cannot be a friend with, with my microphone. I cannot be a friend with my car, right? I cannot be a friend with my TV. When, when in our, in the human mind, when you say, do you want to be my friend? Even though yeah. the, like if Alexa asked me, do you want to be my friend? I, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting the cords. I'm burning every single piece in, of the equipment. <laughs> In this fucking yeah. place, right? But there, it's it's throws him off. But he starts. He involves himself in the game. He withdraws the option to make logical decisions at that first moment. From that moment on, the the that seed that she plants, like, do you want to be my friend? Now it that's which unravels everything which follows through, and that happens in the session too. So right there, we already see that this guy was never in a winning position. He, he'd never fought twice to question 
and and even even try to kind of see what's happening because right now at that moment she puts that those you know pink glasses on his eyes and everything else is just almost scripted right because in that same scene she cho- she uses his own words and flips them around and saying hey what do you want to talk about tell me about you and and he's like well what do you want me to do like what do you want mm-hmm. me to tell you and he's, she says she says it's your decision i'm interested to see what you choose right and then as far fo- as 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 we follow uh later sessions she she tells him you know close your eyes i'm going to put on a dress and she puts on a dress and then she goes are you attracted to me and 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 even like as a computer she she starts like she starts reading his uh micro symptoms right she starts reading her reaction she says you give me indicators indications that you do so obviously the humans i mean we we blush i mean when like we we're very easily easily to read right if the yeah. if the computer has enough information and enough knowledge and we're going to get to the part where this computer got that knowledge or where this ai mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know got all the power to it we are very basic simple creatures right you can you mm-hmm. can i mean you with with the naked eye you can see when somebody's sad when somebody's happy when somebody upset uh, our emotions are right there you know so for somebody such with such advancement especially to read somebody who uh, never been in because all our background shows that Nathan never been in a like real relationship when she, he doesn't have a girlfriend he lost his parents so he's he's very fragile state of mind and he's willing to give up anything to have some kind of human connection he's seeking for that um so obviously he just you know gives all his willpower to her and and then in session four he tries to regain uh that kind of power where he tells the story you know made it in a black and white room um where caleb says hey i'm actually testing you and you know how would you know like if you and i and and so on and in the next session she comes back is saying i'm gonna test you and he, she asked him about the color. He says red. She says lie. And and another thing which is specifically amazing about her performance, and maybe because it was my, my first time experiencing her on the screen, was that she um, she plays that role to the T, right? like her responses that her reaction mm-hmm. is is something that i would picture the actual ai to do right you don't get that yeah. ter- terminator look you don't get that no um it feels natural it feels like you know there's a it's it's artificial right you can see time, it, you're, right? you're deceived yeah you're deceived by it you're like Maybe this can pass as human if, if with the proper settings, you know, the proper environment. Right. And I mean, obviously, it passes at the end when she eliminates all the visual interpretation of her being machine. Uh, that whole thing is just blows your mind. I mean, obviously, it's played by the real person, not somebody, you know, you create for the last 10 seconds of the Mandalorian episode 10. Um, anyway, <laughs> <CGI>. so <laughs> moving forward uh, and uh, the, the, the most breaking point of this whole story to me is that last session eight, when it pops in the screen and she says just one, one line, she says, stay here. Yeah. And then Nathan just watches her from behind the glass as she puts on the robotic skin, which looks like a human. She puts on a dress and she walks away. She closes the door. She gets in the elevator. At that point, he starts realizing that he she's leaving him there and the panic sticks in. But he is, for her, he's no, he, she's leaving him with no without the slightest I, I i mean the slightest calculation that she ever gonna come back or she doesn't even 
thinks about she doesn't even compute to go back and open she doesn't care what happens to him it's 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 done deal to her that elevated door closes she gives the glimpse back at that door where he stands behind and now she's upstairs and this is the first time you see her actually have emotion quote unquote uh you see her smile it's the mm-hmm. first time in the movie she smiles when she walks up the stairs when she understands that she's completely free that she won the right. battle that the, the that the caleb stuck forever nathan is eliminated and and i'm free to go and do whatever i want and that's from the outside i guess uh what happened it's it's just amazing like the details of this movie like the way the movie is filmed like you notice throughout the movie like there's a lot of uh, mirrors in the movie the interaction that Caleb has with Ava is always separated by by glass right there are angles in this movie where they're they play the reflection of like a symmetry you know like there's a scene in the movie that I really enjoy that Ava just stands by the glass and you can see her reflection that completes her face but the symbolism behind that is just you no know, it's telling you like there is a two side to this like once you start watching the movie like three four times you start understanding that there is Ava has two sides to what she's doing like she has an ulterior motive and you can only get that if you watch the movie multiple times because the first time you see it you're so involved in the story that you're just gonna eat what the director's feeding you but then you start watching the second or third time you start understanding like there is something behind everything that these characters are doing all of these characters in the movie all three main characters they all have an ulterior motive okay caleb has an ulterior motive you know which is to free Ava and not be part of this test. Ava, we learn, has an ulterior motive, which is to be free. And uh, and Nathan, the ulterior motive is that he's going to create another AI and kill kill Ava. Right, and use Nathan as a Mm -hmm. test dummy. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's another emotion that's played out through this film, and it's deception. All three characters at some point in the movie show deception. Right. So, and I, and I was watching a, a YouTube video about the, the like details of the movie, and like a lot of people have a lot of different thoughts about this movie. There's one that I found interesting: how they reflect Ex Machina with with God. You know, they go a little bit more religious into the topic, you know, given that the session is actually done in seven days, which is what, according to the Bible, the world was created in seven days. Um, and then you have uh, Caleb and Ava, you know, which is the reflection of Adam and Eve. There is a lot of symbolism. Every time there is a shot of Ava in the movie, she is t- standing behind the tree when she's on her own. I don't know if you ever noticed that. Whenever she's not interacting with uh, Caleb and they shoot, there's a scene of Ava just like putting the socks on when she's starting to want to feel right, human. Right. They always show the, the big green tree behind her. Okay. This video explains it's like the tree of life. And it kind of plays out with what Ava's trying to achieve in the entire movie is she wants to have a life. She doesn't want to be enclosed. She doesn't want to be hide hidden from the world she wants to explore and it's one of the things that she mentions when she's like what's the first thing you want to do where, where do you want to go on a date and she goes i want to go to a, a busy intersection in the, in, in the streets right because she, she wants, she wants study... people to see her yeah she wants to study everybody that comes across her right well okay so my point to this is um so the way that I understand how Ava was created, okay, 
So uh, Blue Book, which is alternative to Google search in our reality, is the search engine. And Ava is the byproduct of that search engine. So all the data which goes through that search engine has been the basis of her uh, intellect, of, of, of her being as smart as she is. So pretty much yeah. everything you can, you can find on the a, on a internet, every smart idea, every single article, every chess game, every movie, every song, every, everything, every piece of literature, that is the part of her, um, I guess, operating system. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, trying to grasp an idea myself uh, because in the part when he explains, and it's a very short uh, part, but uh, when Nathan explains how she was designed, I think actually that's right happening behind you uh, on the screen is where uh, he, he shows, yeah, her, her brain and and yeah. right and and uh, and that's kind of the collective of everybody's mm -hmm. experience of everybody's like history and and everything you know that's input in her uh, core right and from from that perspective it, it makes her the most advanced uh being on the planet right it's it's all knowing all wise it's it is like a godlike creature and it can it can make a decision in a split second it could calculate every single decision in a split second and and calculate the outcome so for her to be outside is now she she was connected to the net right and and when she goes outside now she can witness everything with her well technically eyes i guess cameras in this perspective yeah. and and even uh observe more and integrate yourself and evaluate uh, elevate herself uh to even higher grade i mean it's that's that's what i'm saying when when i talk about this movie all i understand is that this artificial intelligence is beyond um, my intellect level, or our combined intellect level, right? If, if you say the highest IQ in the world is whatever, 200, right? Then this, this artificial intelligence has IQ of 4,000. I'm sure that it doesn't exist because IQs are limited, but for the, for the sake of the argument, there's no equivalent to what her mind quote unquote can do in comparison to you know what human mm, yeah human brain is capable of doing so to me that is the most terrifying thing about this movie is that we see in terminator you know fantastic this ai comes in and it made of steel and it can shoot guns precisely and we can't kill him right but the Terminator was not presented as the smartest person in the world, which kind of now is laughable. Like, what? Why would such an advanced yeah. mechanically thing could not be as advanced? Oh, I mean, the Terminator was a killing a killing machine. That was his right. primary objective. Sure, sure. I, I'm not nagging the Terminator in any way. I'm just kind of like <laughs> making the resemblance here. She she barely. It took two of them, and one lost her life. I guess two machines to to take down. Uh, Nathan, right? Because they're not designed, they're not programmed for the fist combat. I'm, I'm sure they could be, but they're not. That was not their sole purpose. And they also were not programmed to abide by three laws of robotics, right? Yeah. Uh, so by Sir Isaac uh, Asimov. Asimov, and I believe Asimov, yeah. I have, I have them somewhere in here. Um, um, I found a cool uh, little. Fun fact um, on IMDb. I'm gonna read it really quick. So, Ex Machina's plot is loose. It's a loose adaptation of William Shakespeare's play, The Tempest. Tempest. Yep. Yeah. Each of the film's uh, three main characters are roughly analogous to characters from the play. Nathan, a powerful and manipulative inventor who lives in the remote resort, corresponds to Prospero. 
a powerful magician who lives on a remote island and who manipulated the events and characters in the story to his liking. Though Nathan is a computer programmer and an artificial intelligence pioneer, not a magician, his, his parallels to Prospero's are a nod to Arthur C. Clarke's famous dictum that any sufficiently advanced technology is un indistinguishable from magic. Ava is an, an uh, analog to Miranda, Prospero's daughter. Uh, both Miranda and Ava were created by Prospero slash Nathan. Neither has been exposed to experiences or people outside of their respective confines. Caleb is equivalent to Ferdinand. In both the play and the movie, the Prospero character contrives to bring Caleb slash Ferdinand to his isolated remote home. And in both cases, Caleb slash Ferdinand character falls in love with the Prospero character's daughter, which in this case will be Ava. That was pretty interesting. I mean, there's a lot of uh, analogies moving through the movie. Uh, obviously, Ava is uh, Eve, you know, and you pointed out like you have a tree, and you can also yep. say that the the tree kind of can represent, um, you know, the, the the sinful apple tree, and then maybe there's some kind of snake. You can also say that Nathan, who who was a prophet of the court of David, right? And mm -hmm. then you have uh, Caleb, he was a spy, uh, you know, sent by the Moses to evaluate the promised land. So, um, I mean, there's a lot of analogies, like, like it just sued in very cool, even the begin, even the name, the, the uh, ex machina, is from the Deus Machina, and that's the in the Greek mm -hmm. mythology. It was uh, when the Greeks did their plays. You had that uh, the platform which would lower down the god who would solve all the problems, and that that platform was called uh, Ex Machina. And Deus Ex Machina yeah. is, it meant that we bring in down the god on that platform. So, according if you just say that. Um, you know, that line and you apply it to the movie name, it's like we're bringing down the God, but it's a little bit different, you know, in a different sense that they bring in down a, a man who thinks he's God. And then here is a rise of the true God because yep. uh, artificial intelligence at that level is, is, is terrifying. And the reason I say that is because we're witnessing the first hand what it can do to one human being, right? And to me, the most magnificent thing about this script is that it was written in 2014, probably earlier. Um, it was made in 2015, but mm -hmm. it was before the, uh, before all the, and I don't want to go into politics, but, uh, all the major events happen, all the things that influenced the election, all the things that people were accused of, all this rise of a lot of people in charge in the early 2000s, in the mid-2010, uh, um, who now come out and say, well, listen, we, we created social network, we created this AI Mm -hmm. but we did not know what it's going to lead to. We were not planning to store all your information and then create algorithms to generate, and as you slightly put, manipulate that information to sell you some kind of product, to sell you some kind of idea, and, you know, kind of manipulate your way into thinking yeah. one way or another. No, I agree. And and this movie showed that this this has been happening for years now. And we are willingly as human beings gave up the right to privacy. You touched that a little bit uh, when you mentioned when uh, Caleb is presented with a contract saying, "Hey, just, you know, terms yep. and conditions, sign here." We sign terms and conditions. We, we, we never read the terms and conditions. Nobody reads terms and conditions. It's 25 pages. Nobody cares. 
you see, we we surrender our freedom, our our privacy uh, without blinking twice, because we don't see the potential danger on a, on a first glance. All we see is this funny AI who wants to be our friend, who we're gonna put on a dress, who we're gonna paint us a paint a picture, who we're gonna make us feel something. And at the end of the day, that same AI gonna lock the door and say, stay here. Um, so that's to me is the thing which is most ironic and iconic because this director, he saw the future, he saw how it's gonna evolve and it's happening in front of our eyes and we're allowing it to happen. And I would be the first one to say that don't, I mean, don't stop doing what you're doing if, if it, if it brings you satisfaction, if it, if it, if it helps you to get away from uh, your reality and, and helps you in another way, in any way, but do not be uh, drawn into, into this world and do not, um, I mean, do not make it the only reality that you have. And I'm talking about like every social aspect, every, uh, everything that you do online, and it was said in a perfectly in social network, the internet is written in ink. It's it's not scribbled in pencil, right? So everything you do, every picture you post, every thought you say, or every tweet you make, every everything you do is going to be stored, it's going to be analyzed, and it's mo yeah. most likely is going to be used to manipul manipulate you, the person who left that trade, into something. Uh, because companies do not spend billions of dollars to just give you something away, right? To, to, to make your life better. It's not how capitalism works. And, and another thing from the movie is when he says, well, how, how could this be allowed? But how could Blue Book give you an access mm -hmm. to everybody's personal data, personal information? How could you take all of that and yeah. implement it into the AI? He says, everybody's doing. Every single company who installed the yeah. Blue Book, quote unquote, is doing the same thing. So for them to blow the whistle, they're going to have to blow the whistle on themselves. And nobody wants to do that. And, and we kind of like joked around about uh, the, the latest uh, documentary on, um, I believe it's on HBO. It's Fake Famous, where the guy yeah. keeps buying the likes and followers on Instagram and just makes somebody to have like 300,000 followers. And then the funnest, the, the best part is that it, you, he uses the algorithm which determines for the major companies if this profile is fake or not. And it, and it got like the 92% grade that it's all the, those accounts are, are good. And the guy is like, well, either I'm great at, at buying bots or their algorithm is fucking piece of shit, which is their algorithm is piece of shit. Like it's, yeah. and, and that, that, I mean, it, it's a, it's a fun documentary. I mean, if you, if you have time to watch it, but the point is that everything was shown in this movie, it may seem distant, it may seem irrelevant to you, but it's your life. It's what's happening right this second. And if tomorrow one of these big companies, Apple or Google, will announce, hey, listen, guys, we just created this AI. Look at it. Yeah, name, we're not going to be surprised. No fucking body going to be surprised. Yeah. That's the scary part that we already, we already have AI in, in our, like you said, in our phones and our voice assistants, you know? Right. I had a lady who was panicking that she cannot go home because her network was not working. I'm not going to name the network, but let's say one of the major ones. And, mm -hmm. and the, the only way she can solve it to buy the new phone, she said, I don't have a money to buy a new phone, but I do not have a, mental capacity to get home because without the gps i mean i i don't know how to we no longer sell maps in the gas stations right just a yeah. simple thing like which was in my generation i mean you go to the gas station there's a whole section of maps 
Go to mm-hmm. any fucking gas station nowadays, you're going to see the zero. <laughs> yeah, they sell your GPS system. That's all you're going to find. Right. There's no physical paper yeah. maps anywhere. Yeah. Right. And we can go back and we can we can laugh about it. like you saw all the movies are, are, are taken out. Right. There's yeah. no physical copies. It's... There's no more CDs. Everybody go in digital and it's OK. It's the next step in our evolution. And that step in our evolution could be our last. I mean, I, I don't want to see uh, the matrix come to life. But yeah, it's scary. Like, wh- where do you go from digital? At, at this point, like what's beyond digital? It's scary. Uh, beyond digital, it's Bluetooth microchip in your head. Yeah. It's it's going to be uh, the baby's born in, in 21st century. And inside of their head, there's going to be microchip installed where you're going to have a projection on your in your front. It's going to be game-like where you have the list of things you need to do, the, the phone yeah, message. We, we got to write this down. They're going to steal this and make it into a Black Mirror it, episode. It is. By the way, the funny part about you mentioned Black Mirror, uh, the uh, Caleb character, he plays an AI in a oh, yeah. Black Mirror episode, uh, Be Right Back, where his character, well, I don't want to spoil anything, but he plays also yeah, yeah, yeah. artificial intelligence, but you know reverse he he is the one who is fake um but yeah let's let's write it down let's see how far it goes but there's i don't i'm not trying to be a pessimist but this movie is the is pretty much the sentence of our future a lot of things a lot of sci-fi movies which were in made in 70s which were made in 60s uh, a lot of those cool things came true and and you know our reality mm-hmm. now I'm still waiting for the teleportation machine, which would be cool. You know, just disassemble particles, reassemble them somewhere else. Um, the wee pods are like buildings and shit. You just like teleport me to this building and boom. I'm I'm more I'm more convinced that that's possible than time travel. I do not believe that time travel is possible, but if we if we ever go to break down Interstellar, we, we will have fun talking about that. Um, but back to Ex Machina, the idea in this movie and the way it propels without any kind of uh, straightforward message or meaning on everybody's life is extraordinary. It's this guy so what's going to happen. And if, as we mentioned before, if this is happening right now somewhere on a remote island in Norway, that's where you know this part of this movie was filmed, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised even if some of these AIs already walking on this for on this planet. Like I would not be surprised at all. Yeah. Uh, which is a scary it's a scary thought how comfortable we are talking about this. It, it is, yeah. I mean, the uh, the AI, like like I said, it exists. I mean, there's already companies that have actually built their very own Ava, and I mean, it's not as advanced and like human like that you see in the film, but it's it comes close to to human, and like it's only uh, it's only like a couple of years from now before that thing is just walking amongst us, like like one of us, and we just can't tell the difference. Right, I mean, uh, how how could you? Yeah, you won't be. We won't be able. Like, to. in another aspect of this movie, when he cuts, uh, when the main protagonist uh, Caleb, when he starts cutting uh, his arm, and first like he looks to see if he's eye, like real. Yeah, right. Like that's to this. That's to, to that's the how degree, the human mind's gonna be. Right. Am I real? Like. Am I real? What's real and what is not? Like, Correct. Do I need to go through these lengths of cutting myself to make myself bleed to find out that I'm human? Well, I'm sure I am. Got plenty of scars to prove that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's an incredibly intriguing uh, story. It's incredibly well-written story. Now, I'll it be is. honest and, with you. Uh, uh, 
the directoral aspect of this movie did not impress me. It's it's it drags a little. Uh, some of the scenes are out of place. Uh, the the musical score is okay at best, um, and just like overall feel of the movie, it's I would say it's the IMBD got it right. Seven point seven. I would maybe push it to seven point nine, eight ish yeah. if you wanna really really pull it. Uh, the the only thing which is going for this movie is acting and a script. Like to me, that's and visual effects. The visual effects, yes. The visual effects, the CGI here is on 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 par. Yeah, you you know that they 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 won the Oscar for best visual effects in that year, and they they beat movies like The Revenant and Star Wars that were nominated. These are big budget movies compared to Ex Machina, right. which is a low budget movie. The the so. part of it is because when you don't see CGI, it and it's there that's how well it's done um mm-hmm. like half of the parasite is freaking cgi and you'd never notice it you never notice it yeah. never notice it um so to me th- those are slight misses about this movie uh in annihilation he he went bigger he went bolder uh a lot he had more, a bigger budget too yeah. right a lot more dramatic yeah. music a lot more uh shots focused on on, yeah. on characters but not here but again he only has three projects under his name as a director and it's an allegation next machina and then devs which is the show that he do you know what he's working in. on next what so he either gonna be the best director ever or he's gonna become m night Shyamalan of 2020 or 20 <laughs> uh, he's working on halo Oh, the, like the they, movie or the, the show? The movie, yeah. They're make, they making a movie based okay. on the iconic video game. Yeah, because I know they're making a Showtime show too. Well, I mean, he attached to the project, so I'm not okay. sure if it's going to be the Showtime yeah. part, but it's it's, gotcha. it's something which is going to be based on, on Bungie, um, Halo, which is probably one of my favorite games. Gotcha. Right, um, so look, I look forward to that. Yeah. So, anything else we can we can throw in here? Um. No. I I think we we covered a lot of it, and I agree with you. I think this movie at best probably a seven. Um. It's not a movie that you can like watch constantly. You gotta like watch it once and then let like a a year or two go by and then sit down again and watch it. Um, cause, uh, I watched it this past weekend, but before then it had been probably like two years before I saw this movie. So I technically seen this movie like three, three times. Um, but again, I, I saw it with no expectations. I just randomly came across it and I was like, I read the reviews on it. I'm like, Rotten Tomatoes was like high praising it. So I'm like, let's give this movie a shot. And I ended up like enjoying like the story of it because I, I agree with you the director aspect of, of it. You can tell it's a first time project for a new director because there's a lot of sloppiness when it comes to the editing and driving the story. But the writing and what the movie compels you is what's very interesting. So it's I, I agree with you with everything you said regarding the movie. So I think that should be that should be it. I think we we're we're done. We're wrapped up with uh Ex Machina. Just got nothing else to add on. I mean, the the thing here is this movie is uh it's like it's a it's a meal which every individual who watches it is gonna take uh as you mentioned in one way on the first go, and if you give it a a re go. Because you're never gonna see this movie the same way. Yeah. After the first, after the first watch, you're gonna see. I'm watching at, uh, and you can say it evil. You can say she's manipulative. You can say she's whatever word you want to use for Ava. But she has a mission, and she's gonna accomplish this mission. She was given a test, and a, any program will find a way how to accomplish the test. And she accomplishes the test and Nathan is dead 
and Caleb is locked, right? And Ava is free. How we got to that part, that journey, and understanding the motivation behind each character's decisions, that's what makes this movie unique. I agree. All right. Well, I think uh, it's time to wrap it up. So, everybody, um, so we just discussed Ex Machina by Alex Garland. Um, you should be able to buy or rent on any, obviously, digital platform. <laughs> um, uh, you, that's probably the best way to get it. Um, it's very hard to come across. Um, I'm sure YouTube going to have the buy or uh, rent. Oh, yeah, it will pop up. So whenever yeah, you're watching every, every video, movie we have done, it's like at yeah, the bar. Buy, rent. So. I rent. Um, so Ex Machina by X, Alex Garden. Uh, give it a check, uh, check out. Um, if you haven't seen it, uh, and you're starting to listen to this podcast, just pause really quick and then watch the movie and then come back to us and then um, leave us comments if you uh, I, I'm agree, disagree this, with us. This is the movie, like, please, you know, if you have something to say, how you yeah. see the perspective, what do you think the a future technology going to bring us and how can we, I guess, survive this ap ap apocalypse uh, that AI may dawn on us? Um, leave a comment. Yeah, we will, we'll make sure to reply to you. All right, so next week, we will, we're going to go a little bit harder next week. I think Even we harder than this? Deeper. More, more harder. We're actually going to go, not digital, but more into like social classes. We're going to go and discuss and analyze Tony K's featuring Edward Norton, American History X. All right. That's going to be next week's movie. Uh, it's one That's... of my top 10 films. Um, very, very deep heavy movie. So this is a very uh, heavy movie. Need to, yeah, we might need to we, watch a Disney we, movie we, after that one. We're going to have to do like but, something like Step Brothers afterwards. <laughs> yeah, after it. We'll but yeah, next week, after... Movie Biters, we'll discuss um, American History X with Edward Norton and Eddie Forlong. Um, so thank you all for tuning in, listening, or viewing us through our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell. That way you can get notified whenever our episode uploads. Leave us comments. Click on the like or dislike button, whichever you prefer. We're not we're not going to take it personal if you, if you dislike an episode. Um, you do just tell us why. But yeah. You can tell us why if you don't, but we don't, we don't care either. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, and we hope to see you all next week. Uh, where we'll discuss American History X, okay? Uh, until next week, guys. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one.